Welcome back to the finishing line and our Chetland Festival 2021 long shot video. Right, I had a habit of calling out Kevin when things went fucked up in it. So I called myself out. I forgot to press record on this. Tom actually had to text me from Wexford to say it. He missed the best five minutes ever in finishing line. <laughs> it was. We would have went global after that. James. James giving out free bets left, right and centre from Labrooks. Oh, James is with us, by the way. James is, uh, <laughs> James is telling us about beautiful Wexford. Oh, it's lovely here, lads. Sure. Tom, Tom is down. He's a bit further down, but he, he knows what, what a good county is. And, well, Wexford, it's, it's looking well now today, to be fair. The, the weather's been good, so can't complain too much. I can't wait Thanks. for the view from the box that you said we're getting in Punchestown. Yeah. Well, Courtesy of Labrooks. Punchestown at the minute, can't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say we get a box up there, but you know we're racing or nothing up there. We'll just be there in isolation. Yeah, I can't be fucked with this, this anymore. At the minute, anyway, yeah, I think um, I think we're going to have to do without some of the big festivals this year, unfortunately. Uh, as James was saying before, I forgot to record it. Uh, what was it? Ask odds, odds on to be off. Yeah, uh, it looks as if um, Royal Ascot's not going to go ahead. It's odds on that it won't still at the moment. Now that could change depending on what way. Boris comes out and talks about sport in the next couple of days, but at the moment... This is yeah, also the man that gave easily and the 10 to 1 at a preview night. So, me and Andrew have a... In the five minutes that you missed, we have a match bet that Grayson will be back by the end of May for a case of Heineken. Drink responsibly. I'm for Grayson being back. Andrew's not. It's not going to be back. Well, I think you're being very hopeful, Dave. Well, Andrew was the person that was optimistic. Punchestown will still go ahead, and he's totally gone the other end of it now. He was <laughs> up up until yesterday, Tom, and I mean up until yesterday, everything was everything was back to normal by June. Text me yesterday, everything's gonna be back to normal in August. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's slowly breaking me down. He just spat the dummy out yesterday and just gave up. I did, I did. I had a little hissy fit. I'm meant to be getting married in October, lads, and I'd say there's no chance. So one of my friends... I oh, know you'd be all right, Tom. You might not have any guests, but you'd be able to get married. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I'd say there'll be no guests. I'd say I'd say we'll be out of lockdown, but there won't be gatherings of more than 50 people or whatever. So. My ex fiance got married like three weeks ago in the midst of all this. How did you cope with that, Dave? Yeah, I couldn't give a fuck, Tom. I just thought it was very funny because... Part of the reason I got rid of her was because she was a diva and wanted all these spectacular things at our wedding, and then Jesus. she got married in a in a coronavirus pandemic with no fucking guests. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> she happens, isn't it? Take Congratulations. That's <laughs> how you really feel. <laughs> do you know the way you said that was the best five minutes of the finish line history? This is the best five minutes of the finish line history. <laughs> she stole me dog as well, Tom. Oh poor Alfie. She did. She took me dog. Never let me see him again. He was supposed I to be joint custody. Give her for taking the dog, Dave. I couldn't. Uh, he was my fucking little best friend. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Dave, Dave has spent too much time in his own last few weeks, lads. <laughs> okay. I need to get that. I need to get that. Last two years in the making, that is. I, I, you, you asked me, Tom, how did I feel? I actually was so, so happy when I seen the photo, like. Oh, but sure, look, that's a bit mean. But oh, fuck this is ga- Oh, How do we top that? Nah, it's not mean. Jesus. Fuck her, she's throwing me down. <laughs> we start talking about horses. Oh, you probably say she is a horse. I made a good... Pl- oh, never mind. <laughs> go on, let's keep going. You can't, James, you can go first this time. <laughs> really, you can calm down. Sure. You want me to go ahead? We'll, we'll, we'll give Dave a bit of a break there. Too. Give him a little breather there. Yeah. Here, have a drink. Fuck's sake. Yeah, all the medication's gone to my head. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. You can't get a doctor's appointment in this fucking pandemic either, Tom. Oh, here we go. Four weeks in trying to get a doctor's appointment. End up with a sinus infection and an ear infection. Had to have a row yesterday. Full on row with the receptionist. And I <laughs> told her the solicitor's letters come and everything. Told her to fucking stick our smart comments up a hole as well. This is going to be the best finish line video ever. <laughs> and I have to listen to all this. Well, go ahead. Sorry, James. You're far away there. <laughs> all right, lads. I'm off. <laughs> it's been, yeah, it's been about a few weeks. Well, um, looking to next year's festival, the, the first kind of long oh. show I picked out is um, in the National Hunt Chase. 
used to be the four miler, unfortunately not anymore. But I'm looking at latest exhibition for Paul Nolan, who was only narrowly touched off at the Albert Bartlett this year, and he's um he's definitely one that's going to take the fences. He's going to be probably a stone better of a horse over fences. Brian Cooper has ridden him in his couple of successes this year, but Barry O'Neill is going to take the mount in the National Hunt Chase, and I think this horse is going to be a grade one chaser. He's going to win plenty of grade one chases for Paul Nolan, and he will be the first one I'd be looking at for next year's festival. It's like you said it before. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was like it was rehearsed. <laughs> oh, I tell you, got a bit of practice on that one. Very good, very you're well, good. You're welcome. See, I thought it'd be nice like that, give him one go at it. Before we actually go live. It wasn't a mistake at all. No. It was pre-planned. <laughs> right. Tom. Go for it. All right. I'll give you my first one, lads. Um, this is kind of... This is kind of how we picked out um, a Plutard last year. Okay. Um, when I'm picking these big anti-post... Big-priced anti-post horses, I like to look at a race where you know a horse is is going to run there but and I'm just saying that now I'm not 100% guaranteed this horse is going to run there but I think he's going to run and there's question marks around a lot of the others so we're looking to stay as hurdle market for next year the horse is a horse called Sire de Burley um, if you look at the if you look at the stayers market you've got Paisley Park he's 7-1 to one favour he's had a problem with his heart last year look he could come back he could so does fine. Dave my only issue is is you never really know. Sprinter Sacra had a problem with his heart, pretty simpler, similar, and he only came back once. Uh, you only saw the real Sprinter Sacra once after that, so it's, that's a massive concern for Paisley Park. Benny DeJew is second favourite. She's not going to run in the stairs. Honeysuckle is third favourite. She's not going to run in the stairs. And then you've got Sire de Burley in, the, in there at 16 to 1. Followed by Time Hill at sixteen to one, who will probably go here, and Listnagar Oscar at sixteen, so he'll probably go here as well. Um, after winning it last year, Sire de Burley, he's won the attempts in the last two years in a row. Now he won it off top weight last year, um, off a mark of one hundred and fifty-two. He's up to one hundred and fifty-eight now. Um, that's his days in handicaps gone. He ran to an RPR of one hundred and sixty-four um, in the attempts this year. Him and the storyteller were miles clear. There were six and a half minutes clear of the rest. He gave the storyteller three pounds. The storyteller was laid out for that race as well. Um, he goes on any ground. He doesn't win by too far, ever, this horse. He's actually only won two races, four Gordon Elliott. They've both been at Cheltenham. Um, he wears cheap pieces and blinkers for that reason, to concentrate him. Um, his Cheltenham form, he was fourth in the Martin Pipe in 2018. And then he's won the attempts for the last two years. Solid, solid form. He's he hasn't even really got to step up that much to, to go close in the stairs. Uh Lisnagar Oscar ran to an RPO of 162 when winning it. That's two pounds below what sorry the Burley ran to. Um sixteen to one is a huge price. And as long as he doesn't go chasing, he's he's a cracking bet, I think. He's sixteens. Yeah. That's pretty short, really, isn't it? You think that's short? For him, yeah. What else is there in the race? Not much, but I thought you'd get at least 25s on him. James, sort the man out, will you? You know, I I'll have to wait and see. <laughs> you lay me 25s, Andrew, and I'll take some of it. Listen to Gar Oscar's the same price as him. I know he won it this year. Time Hill is the same price as him. He was only fourth in the Albert Bartlett. Um, I don't know. I, tell, I think he's a very good bet. Loves Cheltenham. Even what's a key point with this lad as well? In his let's just call them warm up races, were we for the attempts? Educational um, races. Year, he ran to a, he had, ran to RPIs one hundred and fifty five, one hundred and fifty, and one hundred and fifty four. So take of those warm up races what you will, but uh, I I really fancy him. I think he'll run a very big race in the states. Can't really knock it because it's a bad division at the moment, isn't it? It's a bad race, that's, and that's what you want to look for, I think. Hmm. Do you want to go? Yeah, I don't mind, yeah. Uh, do you hear me anchor cracking there? That's a bit weird. I thought it was your heart breaking again. <laughs> no, that's that's <laughs> mended. Uh, my first one is uh, in the Arkle. It's um, Darver Star, third in the champion hurdle this year. 
um, it's with a good trainer. He's already come out and said he's going to be campaigned as an Arkle horse next year. Looks like he'd jump a fence. He's 22 to 1. I know a lot of people will be like going for Shishkin in, in that race, but we're looking at long shots. I think running to the level he ran in the champion hurdle is up there with the same level as the Supreme Novice. So the differences in prices, I'm happy to go with Darver Star. I actually have him backed already. Yeah. I'll take you on in the Arkle. Captain Guinness. Yeah, but Captain Guinness will end up being good. Uh, as well. I think this fella is going to be absolutely fantastic chaser. He's only had to have three stars his whole life, and he was absolutely taken out of it in the Supreme, where he, at worst, I think would have been placed. Um, as far as I know, he's going chasing, and he's twenty five to one at the moment. The more racing this fella gets into him, the better he's going to be. The more he starts to learn how to race and settle the better he's going to be. I think he's going to be an unbelievable chaser. And there's not much to go on where you go, like he was second to Andy Dufresne around Punchestown. He hacked up in his maiden hurdle, was it Limerick or Cork? I can't remember which uh, one. It was Cork, I think. Cork, yeah. Um, taking on what Henry's horses usually do when they take the fence, I think 25 to 1 for a trainer that is renowned for two-mile chasers. 25 to 1 for a horse that he probably is guaranteed to go chasing is a huge price. That's my first one. Lump on. What's his price is gone now, isn't it? Uh, hold up, Five to four favour. Um, yeah, so on to second choices. James, second choice, go for it, lad. Yeah, I'm going for the Gold Cup with my second Fuck choice. off, really. Yeah. Sorry, James. He's gone into 20s already. He actually twenty fives is here on and it's gone. <laughs> I swear there's yeah, a bug so, on this. Sorry, go on, James. Yeah, I'm just looking at the Gold Cup and the RSA we seen a couple of seasons ago with Delta Work Santini on top of the game and it that was that was just something cracking race. And I like the chances at the top of the game here at a bit of a price. He's gonna come in. Look, Santini was only narrowly pipped. I would love nothing more than to see Album Photo go on and win three in a row. But I just think top of the game will be a bit of a fresher horse. Paul Nichols is an absolute master with these chasers. And there was obviously something a little bit amiss with top of the game last year at Aintree because he missed the, the rest of the season. And, um, yeah, I think Paul Nichols could have this one absolutely bouncing for the showpiece on Friday next March in the Cheltenham Festival. And about 16 to 1, the price at the moment. I think he's going to be a great, great chaser next year. He is absolutely ginormous. He's massive. Just see the size of him. Yeah, when the lad sent oh. us a picture of him, man, uh, he's, I think he's the biggest horse I've ever seen. He's just fucking huge. Did you see that picture, Tom? Yeah, I did. I looks like you right now. Um, probably because he's big and chestnut. He reminds me of a horse called Beshabar. Tim Vaughan. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, I remember uh, him, yeah. One of, one of Scottish national. Just big, 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 big chestnut horse. Um, but I had leg trouble as well. And mm. that's my only worry. Horses that big, they put a lot of weight on their legs. Um, that's my only concern with top of the game. But he's exceptionally talented. If he got there in one piece, he'd have a great chance. He's worth taking the punt of 16s. I, I, I actually have him backed already a couple of times, James. Oh, God. Oh, I, have back to, I have him back to win the, the Hennessy or the Lab Book Trophy, as it's called now as well. Yeah, I think um, I think if he gets a good run at this season and if he can stay in one piece, as Tom said, big horses do tend to, to pick Look, up little niggly injuries because they are, they are just so much bigger. But I, I uh, can't remember ever seeing a horse as big as him. He's, he's been at two festivals as well. And to be honest, when he ran the Coral Cup, i never seen a horse bigger than him going over hurdles. I, I couldn't believe he was able to run the way he did over hurdles with how, how big he was. I think you've seen then when he won the RSA, kind of him start to come into his own. A lot of horses a year off the track wouldn't be a good thing, but I think for him, because he's so big, he surely can only benefit from growing into himself a little bit more. Yeah, he might have filled out even a little bit more, which was which is strange to say because he was so big. But yeah, he's um. The thing is, I I think top of the game would enjoy a bit of kind of a a bit of a shuffle in the middle. He's just that big. I think he'd be able to bounce other horses around nearly and. I say he likes bullion. Big brute. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a big brute, but he's obviously so talented, like as well. I'd say the year the year off now is only after doing him the world of good to, as you said, fill into his frame and 
get bigger and stronger if that's even possible. <laughs> See if he's a we see you now. He'd probably come out yeah around the time of the Hennessy and he might have one run before that. But I'll be interested now because I don't think there'll be too much of sixteen to one should he come out and be impressive in his first couple of starts. Yeah, I think that's, it's, I think that's the best thing I've ever heard on this podcast. What? The man from Ladbrokes calling it the Hennessy. What a legend! <laughs> <laughs> Sacked. Oh, if you weren't getting sacked, you are now. Is it now? Whoops. It is the Hennessy, though. It, it's the Hennessy. You can never be renamed something else. It's the Hennessy, like. It's yeah, always going to be his Hennessy. I always consider the Hennessy as well, to be honest. It's, I think he'll be campaigned like a Gold Cup horse as well, James. He'll go for the Hennessy and then probably one other run and then straight to the Gold Cup. Yeah, I, th- I do think before that um, Paul Nichols has brought some of his good chasers to Ireland now whether he will with this one or not I'm mm. not sure but uh, I'd love it it'd be lovely to see him rock up around uh, punches down there but, or Leopardstown even but I'd say he might just be he might just have one or two starts and then be put away until, until March it wouldn't surprise me if he went the same route as Denman uh, the Labrook then the Lexus and then the Gold Cup I wouldn't say he'll run after Christmas though he oh, goes straight was. to chat. I'd say he's so big you have to. I say it'll be Hennessy, Dem, and Chase Gold Cup. I just can't wait to see him. Yeah. Sure, we can him and Hall where he's going to run, but Paul Nichols is Paul Nichols. Leave him do what he wants. This is it. Right, Tom. I'm shouting like he can hear me down at Wexford. Can he's right there? <laughs> he's right there. Look at him. Um. Now, lads, this one, this one. It's got to go and improve a little bit. We're going to attack the Ryanair. So he shit so. Oh, look, do I change your name from Apple Tom now to something else now before Hold this Hold up for a second. You're going for something in the Ryanair. You yeah, do re- whoa, whoa. You do realise Apple Tom is going to be going there again next year? I do. And I'd give him a good chance. I think he's a fair price because I don't think he ran his race the last day. But you're going off Apple Tom though. You're going for something else. I'm going to go for something else. Oh, oh, Tom. <laughs> you can't mic. do that. This is a long shot. Spot you, re- you know what's going to happen next year? Apple Tom's going to win. You haven't going to. You're not going to have him backed. No, I'd back him. I'd back him at a, a reasonable price. I'd back him. What I, are you going to do? Back four of them each way. My answer. Is <laughs> <laughs> Question dodged. <laughs> My outsider for the Ryanair is a twenty-five to one shot called Simply the Bets. Um, Good show. Won the Brown Advisory this year off a mark of 149 to a race and post rate of 158. He's gone up to 157 now. He needs to improve another half a stone, I'd say, to be really definitely competitive in the Ryanair. I, I've no doubt this horse will do that. He's only a seven-year-old. He improved all the season. Um, he went from 125, I think it was, up to 157 in one season over fences. He only got beaten once. He's had three runs at Cheltenham. He was a no-show in the Supreme in 2018, but he was just too young and immature then. Um, he won there in January, and then he won there again in the Brown Advisory. Um, that bit of form, Dave, I know we were talking about it during the festival from the January race, where he beat Imperial um, Aura, um, Kim Bailey's horse, I think it is. Um, yeah, it's Kim Bailey's horse. In January, and he gave him five pounds. Um, I thought that was a that was an exceptionally impressive run. The third is um, the third. Aura won at the festival off 143. Yeah, and um, the third the third was um was favourite for the grand annual for a long time, but he didn't get in. They ran him. On, they ran him on the on the Saturday in Kempton. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and uh, he won as well. He won a Grade Two at Kempton on the Saturday. He he yeah. won. He actually probably would have gone very close in the grand annual as well. I think all that form is extremely impressive. He's, he's won a handicap off a very high high mark, and he won it well as well. He still looks like there's a lot of improvement in him, that horse. Uh, he's only a seven-year-old. Uh, he's trained by a, a fantastic trainer, Harry Whittington. Um, I really think if you if you give Harry a horse, you'll get all of you'll get everything out of it anyway. Um, and I think twenty-five to one, it's the most likely target for him. Handicaps are gone. You can't. I can't see him coming down in trip. I think the Ryanair. They were second. The connections were second with St Calvados this year. I think this horse is a better horse than St Calvados. Um, 
and twenty five to one. I think it's a it's a decent each way bet, definitely. Good show. I like that. Good show, Tom. Better than Apple, Tom. Last year. We'll see. Time will tell. He, he's going to make our money back. Here's open. I'm I'm agreeing with him. Uh, I'm not going for the same horse, but that's a great show. Who are you going for? Uh, in the RSA, I'm going for Easy Work, Gordon Elliott's horse. Uh, second to Envoy Allen in the Ballymore this year. Second to Asterion for Lange in the two mile grade one. What the hell was that? That's uh, my kick card. Around uh, Leperstone um, before the festival. Um, grade one hurdle form. I thought he was more a uh, soft ground horse. He proved he's not in the RSA. He beat a couple of big burly horses that you'd imagine are going to be decent chasers the big breakaway and the big getaway but I can't un- I can't foresee why they turn that form around I think he's obviously the better horse uh, I don't think he's going to have Envoy Allen to beat um, he'd surely go for the marsh chase I'd say um, the more the sexier horses kind of go for the marsh chase don't they they kind of keep him away from the, the really hard race the ones the where they think they have a future for Gold Cup they usually do so to me Easy work could look like an RSA horse. He seems to be better going up and trip. He was definitely outpaced by Asterion for lunch in the two mile race. And then obviously Asterion for lunch wasn't fast enough for the Supreme. So to me, going up and trip would only benefit him as well. Yeah, all right. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Again, I'm going to take you on the RSA. You're always taking me on. This is not a plan though, right? But I'm going for a horse that has kind of forgotten he was injured all last season and it's the Ben Pauling train bright forecast remember we seen Ben Pauling in the punch town last year oh I had to pull you away from him he was so drunk he was I was drunk too though you were really drunk really drunk <laughs> anyway I, he wouldn't let me talk to him I was only going to say what, how, how the hell did you mess up will he be caught so bad that's all <laughs> hence why I pulled him away <laughs> probably a good job then Andrew well done uh, <laughs> We only got off the ground at all. Shut down. Right. Oh my god. Right. Bright forecast. Missed the whole season uh, through injury. He was second in the novice hurdle between Mr. F- uh, Mr. Fisher. Um, in the novice hurdle, who Mr. Fisher's gone on to win quite decent races this season. And then he went on to Cheltenham and finished third behind RSA winner Champ and City Island, who's lost the plot. Um. He's only had to have five career starts of his whole life, and one of them was a point-to-point. Uh, he was meant to go on average chasing this year with the aim was the RSA. He looks a chaser. He looks like a big staying chaser. He's a forgotten horse. He's 33 to 1, where his form is there. If he if he translates his hurdles form to how close he got with Champ, he could be very, very good. You're taking chances that he's... Obviously, I had to retain a lot of his ability. But with only five starts, you'd think there's more ability to come out of him. And that the uh, break would have done him all the good in the world, if anything. He's still only a uh, six-year-old. Um, I think he's a good future ahead of him. And with Ben Paul and training him, he's going to be bigger than he probably should be. His form is decent. 33 to 1. You're going to get worse 33 to 1 shots than that. That's my case for him. He's he's um another one like top of the game. I wouldn't see a year out being a bad thing really for him. He's kind of leggy, so he needs to grow. He's very immature, very yeah. green still. Even I was watching it last night again. He's a good he, horse. That's a good he show. Was, he's still running around coming up the hill. Like, Plough through the last as well. I think he'll respect the fence as well, and I expect a good little season out of him. That's my that's sec- yeah second one. Um, third. Who is the third one? Uh, yeah, I see, can work away. See here. the way I caught cross yeah. anything so they can't crab it. Yeah. Do you like that? Nah, that's a good <laughs> shout, though. The third one is going to be a bit more hopeful, I think, but it's for the champion hurdle. It's a big if whether she'll run here or not, but Concertista for Willie Mullins priced up there around 33 to 1. She had um, Epitant behind her when just getting pipped in the Mayor's Novice hurdle back in 2019. I suppose you, had, you could have excuses for Epitant, but. That was Concertista's debut as well, and the, the level of form she ran to that day. She looks like she's got better again this year. A couple of nearly runs this season, I think. But I do think that this race, or the race she won at the festival, was always going to be the aim. So 
think maybe they were just trying to keep her right for that. And then romping up the hill to win by 12 lengths was it was so impressive. It was the only other horse that I seen that was as impressive going up that hill this year was Goshen, but unfortunately never stayed up. But we'll have to face Goshen. But I'm just be wary whether whether Goshen would be able to give her the allowance as well that she'll she'll be receiving. I think she'll be very dangerous if she she goes here around about thirty three to one. It's not a bad show. She'll a hundred percent go for the mares, just because it's Willie. Yeah. Um, she's actually a massive, massive, massive fancy of mine for the mares. I think if she turns up there, I think I think Benny or Honeysuckle, one of them will run in the, one of them will run in that chase, and I think I think Constatista each way, uh, a big price in the mares is an absolute good thing. Yeah. Well, look, I, I, I would be more on your way of thinking there that she probably will go for the mares, but I, I just had a couple of quid there on her just for the, for the champion hurdle, hopeful that she'll run because I think you take that epitone form and you look at the way she performed. She's obviously a Cheltenham horse. She, she loves that hill by the looks of things. And I just think if she, if she goes for the champion hurdle, there'd be a few horses that wouldn't couldn't afford to give her the, the mares allowance and I think she could go very well on it, but she will. She probably will line up for the mares, but just a couple of quid to save on the champion hurdle do. Do you see that that could be a thing as well? Um, the mares going to the champion hurdle now at this stage because there's a lot of them winning with the allowance, and the difference the difference between two miles and two miles four. Who's who's to say she's going to stay the extra extra two miles four? Lads, or the yeah, two miles. If Goshen stands up and jumps the hurdles, he can have the four of us in his back and he'll still win. Sometimes, though, sometimes they just don't really train on these juveniles for some reason. And oh, this fellow's a freak. I know Goshen is a star, but Goshen could have a quiet season next year and then come back the following year the way Shars, or not Sharja, Salier has done it. The juveniles get a bad old rap. They're not as bad as, they, as they're made out to be. A lot of the juveniles go on to decent things, but Goshen's a whole lot. Oh, they don't. They are. No, so they a, lot don't. Of, a lot of the juveniles are a bit slow. That's what ends up. They're, they're three mile. They end up being three milers. But this thing is an absolute freaking age. He rem- the only re- the reason I always crab juveniles, because I don't like him at all. The only reason I really like this fella, it's the size of him. He's a big brute. He reminds me the build of Faheen. He's absolutely huge and muscular for a juvenile hurdler to look that big. I think he's champion hurdle wrote all over him. Uh, he's the last time we seen someone going to do that was Or Connor, and he would have won just as far as Or Connor, if not more. And Or Connor went on the next season be beating noses by Hurricane Fly, Jeski. I think this fella could be as good as him. But as you said, he has to show it. But 33 to 1 for a champion hurdle, where as you take this year, it fell apart. So, it could be a good show. Tom? Me, right. This is my most interesting one now, lads. And um, He's been waiting all day for this. Price, and the one that I couldn't believe it was this price, and I cannot wait to have a bet on it. Um, Bally Adam. You know the Gordon Elliott bumper horse? Yes. What price do you think... Well, I've just told you. But, you didn't. Uh, you, you didn't. Did I not? No, okay. no, you didn't say but it. He's 20 to 1 for the Ballymore, right? Just and then tells us. And he's 20 to 1 for the Albert Bartlett. Okay. What price do you think he is for the Supreme? 33s. 40s. What? Yeah, that's because he won't go there, Tom. I'm telling you, this lad, he's 40s with Skybet. And then he's 33 to 1 with Bet Victor and Bet365. And then there's 25s and 20s around the place. I think there's every chance this horse could run in a Supreme. I agree. Gordon Elliott loves Envoy Allen. He thinks he's probably a Gold Cup horse by the sound of it. He still didn't want to run him over two and a half mile or definitely not three mile at this stage of his career. Um, that was a horse who'd already won at the Cheltenham Festival. So if Bally Adam runs here and has shown what I think he can show, I don't think he'll want to run him over. He might run him over two and a half in the Ballymore. That's why I'd have a saver on him for the Ballymore. He definitely won't run him in the Albert Bar. No. There's nothing slow and ploddy about this lad, I'm telling you that much. Um, it's supreme on a Ballymore. 
All I'm going off now is he was impressive winning his bumper. I know it was around Dan Patrick, he beat nothing. I watched his point to point back this morning. God, he was mightily impressive. Um, the day in Navin when he was third, he was really keen that day. He didn't like the soft ground because it was an absolute bog. He still only got beaten two and a quarter lengths, and the winner of that was seventh in the Cheltenham bumper. So it's not bad form. Um, if you look at what people have said about this horse, Gordon said after he won in Dan Patrick, said the ground was too soft in Navin, and he was a bit free. Um, but he's still a very good horse. Jamie Codd got off him in Dan Patrick and said, he could be the best I've ever ridden. Mm. Like, think of the horses that Jamie Codd has ridden. He doesn't need to get off a horse and say that about him. Like, I think this could be an absolute tool, and he's completely overlooked. Um he was bought for £330,000 after winning uh, his point-to-point. He won that for a trainer called Colin McKeever and an owner called Wilson Dennison, who've had lots of very good horses before. Uh, Colin McKeever said after selling him, he said, I think he'd be a superstar someday, right? Colin McKeever has trained Bells Hill, York Hill, Shane's Hill, Black Lion, Kildasar and Bally Ward, to name but a few. They were a few that I just went and looked up quickly. He's had absolute, like, he's had a couple of multiple grade one winners in that lineup. And he thinks this, that'll be a superstar someday. The form is there. Jamie Codd said he could be the best I've ever ridden. And he's 40 to 1 for Supreme. It's absolute madness. Um, go, and, go and mop it up, lads, I'm telling you. I totally agree with that. I'd have 40 to 1 all day on that. I think this fella could be something special. There were, he was a big talking horse in f- the few weeks leading up to Cheltenham. Even Jane, Jane said on the preview night as well, there was big mm. talk about this lad. Uh, and, like, the clue could have been there already. Second Jamie Codd said, this could be the best horse that I've ridden. And he's ridden in by Allen. Like, don't not back him. Yeah. At them prices, you can afford to lose a tenner. At forties, if you go with Ballymore, happily have a saver on him for the Ballymore. If you can get, he's only forties in one place. Um, but Where? if you can get on at forties, that's a wild price. Where, Absolutely. Where's he forties? Um, I just he's not a slow plotter. I guarantee you, there's no way he'll run in the Albert Bartlett. The only other possible for me is the Ballymore. So I have a saver on him for that twenties, but forty to one for the Supreme. I'm loving that. I like that. I agree with you, Tom, on the horse. Uh, I actually have him back the, um, for the, the Ballymore. I just think Gordon Elliott's two big talking horses over the last few years both went to the Ballymore. Sam Crow and Envoy Allen. The two ones that were really considered bankers going into the festival that they were in. And I think he'll go the same route as well. Definitely won't go for the Albert Bartlett. I can't see Gordon and putting, putting him up that way. But uh, I do totally agree with you. I think he'll end up being a really, really, really good horse. But you got to remember... Cleveley Park, Cleveley Park also have um, Fernie Hollow. Yeah, I think Fernie Hollow is all speed. The Supreme will sue him down to the ground, going really fast in behind horses like like the champion bumper was because he's an absolute fruitcake. And I'm actually yeah, coming I around think, to start liking him. I, th- I think it might depend on where Willie sends his couple as well. So I, th- I agree with Tom there. I think that could be, Barry Adam could be a, a serious one for the, for the Supreme. 40 to 1 is massive. That's massive. I'm sure. You wouldn't mind. You wouldn't mind putting your tenor on him if he did. If nope. he didn't go, because if he's declared for that, you're not going to get anywhere near four. Ah, oh, you, you get five if you're lucky. Yeah. So this is it. Like that's. It's all about the value at this stage. Mm. If you're having a bet, and I'm sure if you can afford to put your tenor on him at forties, but I couldn't put anyone off doing it anyway. Who is he forties with again, Tom? Sky bet. Sky bet. And look, he, he may end up going for the Valley more, but I wouldn't rule out the Supreme. The only one, as I said, I'd rule out is the Albert Bartlett. He won't run in that yeah, unless yeah. he's a, com- unless I've got him completely wrong. Um, but like, if he works that well at home that everyone's raving about him, he's got to have a turn of gear. Um, so th- that screams to me Supreme or Valley more. Um, yeah, I'm I'm keen on him. I'm going to back him for both. I think. I think I'm going to do the same. <laughs> Hello, Tom. I hope he goes there to the Valley more. Sorry, I've... sorry um, that I'd like to, to mention. That I, I meant to say this for the champion hurdle. I was talking to a fella who is he, he's a work rider for for Elliot, 
and he seems to think that Abacadabras is going to go the champion hurdle route because Jigginstown want to win it before they they sort of pack up everything. So that could be another one at a bit of a price if you're if you're having a look this far out. Yeah, appar- uh, apparently the word is around that he is going champion hurdle. So there you go. That could be. He he looks a star as well. So we'll just throw in an extra one there, just a, a little extra bookmark for people to lose a few quid on. <laughs> Would we do a thing like that, Tom? I have <laughs> I have Fernie Hollow and Bally Adam backed in the double, so I hope Bally Adam goes for the Bally <laughs> one. <laughs> Imagine they run together. They run against each other. How sick would you be? <laughs> Asher, look, they're two good horses. Um, Do you have another one? I've won. It's it's a little bit shorter than all the rest because it's in the market where you can back to win any race. You know that market? Yeah. Um, now, this is with Paddy Power. You might pro- you probably get better prices with Skybet. It's Andy Dufresne to win any uh, any race at Cheltenham next year. Okay. Um, you already mentioned, mentioned Captain Guinness. That form has been frank to Andy Dufresne. I know he got bet then, but I actually do think he's a decent horse. Um, he was talked about so highly um, all through the year. I don't know what exactly exactly happened that he didn't go to Cheltenham this year. But that Captain Guinness form would have given him a good shout in the Supreme. Mm. Um, I, r- I really th- think Captain Guinness would have been placed in the Supreme had he stayed up. God only knows what race he'll go for. Surely they're going to put him over fences next year, I'd say. So it would be one of the novices chase or maybe a handicap. You wouldn't know what Gordon. So I think he's a good Sorry. price. He's... He's about twelve I or fourteen to one. For that, um, that novice chase that we thought put the kettle on with Gopher. The Apple Tom one. The yeah, 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 the, the, yeah, yeah close for us. Northern yeah. Trust, it's called now. That that would be the one I'd keep an eye on him for because he is very. He's going to be a graded horse in a handicap yeah. this year, I think. Yeah, look, he, he you'd was. imagine he'll end up being a graded horse, and if he's campaigned that that way, um. And he got into one of those races, like he's twelve or fourteen to one. You imagine if he was in that race, he'd be probably four to one favorite. So, I I'd say either the one on the first day or the one that chose him, it won on Friday. Which the Grand Annual. Yeah. Was he didn't win the Grand Annual? He did. He won the Grand Annual. Was he? Did yeah, he? The second last race. Yeah, and he either of them. Uh, another one for him there as well. Just on that, I think that day behind latest exhibition sort of broke his heart a bit. That last year I think he just kind of he seemed to down tools nearly after that race but th- that's not bad form to be going ah, look all the, all the form is there they, they all ran well in grade ones afterwards he got like so the form is there he's he's definitely a graded horse oh, he's a great he's a grade one horse I'd say he's back formers class everything he's, he's beaten or got bet by is either to win the grade one or going very close in the grade one that's a decent show uh, can I have you got another one I've won more uh, another forgot. A lot of forgotten horses today. So my last one is for the mayor's hurdle, and it's Gypsy Island, a thirty-three to one. Have this Surely they're going to run her in the novice hurdle. They can't. Gypsy Island. She got bet in her ma- She got bet in the maiden hurdle by put the kettle on. She's favourite for the mayor's novice hurdle. <laughs> Is she still is she still a novice, Tom? She is. Hang on, I'm checking now. Check that. Da, 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 da. Gypsy Island. Yeah, she's still a novice. She's only ran in one hurdle. She got beat. So Gypsy Island for the mayor's novice. <laughs> 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 she's probably favourite, Tom, is she? She's favourite, yeah. What, what price? Uh, she about 8, 10 to 1. That's still like that. a good right, price. So t- I'll, I'll put up the same argument. Still a good price. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said, just there. Like, I didn't know she was... I thought she was gone out when I was... Um, <laughs> high-class bumper horse. Beat by the Arca winner put the kettle on over hurdles. The horse she had in behind when she won when her bumpers, Cole Reevy, uh, Yukon Lil, Dale Icasian, Milena Melody... Jeremy's flame. She was beating them on the bridle by distances. Um, I know she's been injury prone. She's had to have two injuries so far in her career. She is stamps class all over. She gets a clear run up to Cheltenham. As Tom said, ten to one. I'd back it now. There's not just the class she shows. I, as you probably know, I go by what they do and what she does. 
she translates it back over the hurdle she could be an absolute weapon that's it that's my that's my tree can I give a shout to a couple I put them up in the other anti-boast video now they're a bit shorter yeah go for it but one is one is against yours and possibly my one of my better bets for next year's festival is Pootsbrook in the Mayor's Novice at 12 to 1 yeah I just think if you look at anything else other than Gypsy Island she's miles ahead of them she bolted up in her bumper of Goran she was then third in the Chatham bumper um just behind the pre and uh, what's his name, Fernie Hollow. Like, that's top, top class form. Um, Gypsy Island is very injury prone. I wouldn't bank on her getting there. Queensbrook is a top, top class mare, just on what she did in bumpers. She'd already won her point of points, and we know she can jump. Um, 12 to 1, I think, is an absolute steal. Um, the other one, as we said, Concertista in the mare's hurdle. I'm all over her, 10 to 1. Definitely could be placed. Manila Indo, 14s for the Gold Cup, all over him. Yeah, I agree with uh, that. As well, great festival form. I think he should have won that race. He idles in front, he does absolutely nothing. Um, I think he's got a good chance. And the one I picked today, that I was just looking at it. When are the odds will be out of this? I don't know. But the Fox Hunters. No. <laughs> Come on, I like this. I love Fox no. Hunters. Don't mind them, Tom. Go for it. It's, it's boring and original. But it came to pass, right? Has had two runs at the Chanton Festival, uh, two runs at Chanton full stop. You know, two runs at Chanton Festival. He looked like he was going to nearly win the Fox Hunters in 2016 when he fell at third last, and that was a really good renewal of that race. Um, he's then gone and bolted up. I mean, he absolutely bolted up this year. Um, he's a ten-year-old. He's only had 21 runs, which is not a lot for a ten-year-old. I imagine they're going to gear everything around Cheltenham next year. Um, he ran to an RPI of 153. Um, like for a fox hunters, that's good. Hazel Hale last year ran to 155, but the few years before that, 100 RPIs of 140 odd were winning it. Um, if they can get him there in one piece, um, I think he's a hell of a chance of winning again. And he's not a as Dave calls a sexy horse because he's trained by Eugene O'Sullivan, but Eugene knows knows how to train a horse um, and I think he'll be a bit of a price he'll be he'll be bigger than he should be you're starting to get the gist with the sexy horses Tom and what's what's sexy, sexy and what's horses. not I'm, I'm, there, there I'm is, proud of you um, there is a sort of a, a sexy horse if, if not a bit fragile that I, I will be looking at next year and surely going to see Malone Road at some stage aren't we like yeah how talented that horse is that I think you're looking at a lot of horses. He he might be a little bit overpriced for some of them races just because he he is a bit fragile. But he's he's as good as any of them mm. when he when he's on his day. So he uh, really he's, want to keep he's injured. He's week. too injury prone. He's only had to have one injury. Uh, he's, you never see him. You never hear about him. Around. Everybody's talking about him. Oh, when's Malone no coming back? I wouldn't. I, I, he's I, an optimist no. there. No, he's no Bally Adam, no Fernie Hollow. Yeah, he's better. He's, apparently, he's better than him. He's very, very good, lads. I just, I couldn't back him anti because because he is prone to injuries, but um, he is list. very, very talented. You any other ones? No, I like Gypsy Island, though. I do, I like Well, I've seven there, so. <laughs> and I was low as there, yeah. Right, recap. Your three? <laughs> I forgot. Oh, my uh, God. That, oh, good, time's gone. James, your three. Uh, you forgot. Concertista okay. for the champion hurdle. Three, he Late loved 12. For the national hunt chase and top of the game for the Gold Cup. Tom? Um, simply the bets for the Ryanair, Sire de Burley for the Stairs hurdle, and Bally Adam for the Supreme with a saver for the Ballymore. You remembered? Yes, Daver Star for the Arkell. Um, easy game, easy work. I can't even remember his name. For the RSA. And uh, Andy Dufresne for any race. We don't know what race. Uh, my three are Gypsy Oil for the Mayor's Novice, Captain Guinness for the Arkell, and Bright Forecast for the RSA. My three. Right. So that's us wrapped. Done and dusted for another week. So we will be back next week with our... I suppose how, how we ended up picking these. 
a lot of people want to find out how we pick our anti-post horses. Yeah, there was a few questions in in, in the group that we have, so we'll we'll do them next week. I'd say, really. Yeah. So we'll do that again next week. So that's thanks again for all the messages again. Keeping up with us in this hard time. Um, we're back again next week. Thanks again, James, for joining us this week. Absolute pleasure, guys. Anytime. Might see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah so thanks again for all the lads again give us a like to subscribe and we will see you again next week James oh maybe not go for what's the chance of getting tickets to the um, Irish Champions weekend the Leperstown fixture it's not going to be on Ooh, um, I can try get a few but we don't sponsor them so yeah surely an, here, but I, surely I you know a fella that knows another fella James, what about the uh, what about Liverpool's final home game of the season? You gave me tickets for that, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I buy them just to burn them, to be honest. <laughs> sure, since we're trying. James, the Boy World Cup next year, yeah? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean it won't <laughs> be on? It's September. The boy, we'll get the tickets. <laughs> I, got, I got the tickets for the boy. See that? Go mad, James. Right. <laughs> lads, cheers again. Thanks for that. Cheers, and we'll, lads, we will see you again next week. <laughs>